Good afternoon. Thanks for tuning in to Dear Cyber Sue. Today's topic is, do you honor each other's expectations within your relationship? Well, the one thing that can break up a relationship pretty quickly is when there's over-the-top expectations. But what can also cause problems is when regular reality expectations within a partnership are not met. I'm talking about the basic everyday things that you do for your partner and they do for you. When you first start dating someone new, there's usually a chemical attraction that you have with one another, but you also have to have compatibility. And this is where boundaries come in and having a few expectations that need to be met. They're just human decency. Just things about putting each other first, prioritizing certain things within your partnership that you've discussed. All these things need to be met to keep the relationship in a happy place. Having some expectations and boundaries is necessary because you never want to be taken for granted. You always want to be appreciated by the person you're sharing your life with and vice versa. You want to have a very compatible relationship with them. I say this in many videos, but if you always respect yourself first and understand the importance of having compromise and communication in a relationship, you will always be able to keep things going or at least sit down and discuss them when they're not. So what kind of expectations should you have? What are the most imp imperative ones that everybody should have in their relationship when choosing to be in a committed relationship? Well, number one is always communication, because if you communicate in every aspect or most aspects of your relationship, you'll always have that open conversation with them. There's never going to be questions about why is this happening? Why isn't that happening? Because you're sitting down and you're actually discussing what is important between the two of you. And it should always be reciprocated communication because it's not one person's place to be the expector and the other one just to follow along. You need to be on a similar page. And this is another important thing to look at when you are choosing to be with somebody in a long-term commitment. If you're in an unbalanced situation as far as communication goes, and one person's the talker and the other one's the listener, over time it just becomes a little bit more lopsided and you're not on that same communicative place that you need to be because when you both understand what, you, what each other is trying to say you're validating each other all the time and this is really important to feel to feel loved in a relationship is you want to feel heard and you want to feel valued another expectation is emotional uh, emotionally available both of you have to be really close when it comes to this situation because if one person is a little bit more shut down or removed, the other person feels all the time that they're the ones keeping things going and they're the ones that are being open while you as the partner might be more closed off. And this becomes a lot of work for the communicative and emotionally available person in the relationship because they feel they're always the one that have to do the work. Intimacy and sexual expectations should also be on the same page. This is something that you need to discuss very early on when you are getting together in a new relationship because just being there and doing everything that your partner wants you to do, you're not being true to yourself. You wanna make sure that your enjoyment is just as much as theirs and you're not just doing things to sort of keep the relationship alive. You want to be a part of the intimacy and feel a part of it and have a voice about what's important to you and what isn't. If there's something you're uncomfortable with, this really needs to be discussed. It's not unusual to have different sex drives and that's okay, but you need to talk about this because if your partner's got very, very high driven sexual appetite and yours is sort of mediocre, but you really truly love each other, you need to sit down and talk about this and you need to come to some kind of compromise on how often and what you're going to allow in the bedroom and all these things. This is super important because the last thing you want to do is get to the point where you dread 
making love with your partner or being intimate with your partner. Also, for expectations, please be on the same page when it comes to having children. Some people don't talk about it for a couple of years and they're in a relationship and find out their partner doesn't want children or doesn't want to have a family or maybe wants to do it five years down the road. This is a very important part of life and having an expectation th that you want children and they don't, that is a deal breaker because you shouldn't have to give up something that you truly want in your life, starting a family, for somebody who's dead set against it. So please don't leave this one too late for the discussion board because it's one of the most important conversations with everything else I've already talked about. Also, financial goals and expectations should be in alignment here as well because if their career is something that is really high profile, intense, takes them away a lot, there's travel, they're not home very often, this could really become a problem in your relationship if you have expectations to be with a partner who's home a lot or who's able to have set hours that you can both work with. It's not for everyone to be with somebody who's got this type of a career that takes them away from home. And be honest with yourself about it. Don't, don't think, oh well, yeah, I can probably do it. You know what you like, you know what's important to you. Some people enjoy having a couple of days where their partner travels. Some people don't like that. Make sure that the person that you choose to spend your time with and be in a relationship with, that they have a career that you can live with and vice versa, that they can live with your choice of career. You also have to be on board with who's paying for what and how much of your salary you contribute to, to your family home and how much they contribute and be okay with it. Make sure that you don't have expectations where your partner has to do all the payments for everything because that's not fair on them and eventually they'll resent you for it. Always pay your way. Always put money in. We're not always on the same financial uh, page with each other because one person makes more money, but that's okay. Talk about it. This is why number one communication is important because all the other things I'm talking about go together with being able to discuss it. So there's a lot more expectations that come with the relationship. We all know that. We hear about them after we break up with somebody. Oh, they wanted this and I wanted that. We just weren't on the same page. But the bigger things are the important, the, the important one, like what I just talked about. But there are small ones that are important too. And that can be these, those irreconcilable differences we all hear about over time that end up causing problems in a relationship. So if you always communicate with your partner and tell, talk about what's changing or what's not happening or what should be happening, you'll be able to maintain the, your relationship in a good place. If you shut the door and just let things go and start getting pissed off about what isn't happening or your expectations are way over the top, you're going to be in a one-sided relationship and this isn't good. So please make sure when you're meeting somebody that you don't have over the top expectations, you have realistic partnership expectations. Thank you so much for listening to Dear Cyber Sue today. Please subscribe. And please leave any comments you have below the video and any show topics you may have. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.